Hello and welcome to an educator talk show. Today on my show, I've got a really famous personality who you may have heard of as well, who has been in various companies, but this one, he is um, acting as the CEO of a really famous cosmetic company, the Chandana Labor. Uh, well, Dr. Philip Neri Muligama is on the show today. And firstly, Doctor, thank you so much for uh, coming and sitting with me to talk about the uh, mental health sector or the subject that has you know come out in Sri Lanka as a very cocooned topic thank you so much for talking about it very openly and coming out of the bottle um, let's just talk about a little bit about maybe your journey as to how firstly how comfortable are you to talk about it and why would you like to talk about it just before the show uh, you shared with me this very interesting uh, conversation as to you're trying to give it as a service Maybe we could start from that. Yeah, I've actually went to one of the best schools. In my heart, I would say it's the best school in the country. I went to St. Joseph's College, Colombo 10. I was a very brilliant student. Um, everybody was expecting a um, lot of big things from me. But I want to use the word unfortunately, but then I've sat with the wrong people, made some uh, very rash decisions in life. Um, got hooked on to dangerous drugs, heroin, completely destroyed my youth, completely destroyed the dreams of my innocent parents. And um, finally, it's a long story and I, it's too big for a small interview like this, but then uh, to cut it very short, I was pushed on to back on streets and I was treated by three um, uh, doctors, including Dr. Usha Gunavadana, um, admitted to Angoda National Mental Hospital and two other mental hospitals. Depressed, mentally depressed, lost, um, tried to run away uh, from the reality. Actually tried to run away from the reality three times. But then, uh, thank God, I was miraculously saved. Uh, so I've got this thing. When I was invited for this, I saw this interview as an opportunity. I thought this is a this is a great opportunity uh, for me to share, you know, and give some hope uh, to moms and dads who are struggling, you know, who are struggling but then trying to hide their tears, you know, trying to show a lovely face to the society, but then struggling because of their children. And not only that, there are students, youngsters, you know, who've made who are about to make rash decisions just like what I've done, you know? So I thought, you know, this is a great opportunity for me. You know, time is precious for me. I'm one of the most expansive trainers in the country, but yet I thought this is a great opportunity for me to invest on the betterment of the society. I was just going to ask you, how would you want me outside the character that you've built over the years? How would you want me to introduce you to the world? Somebody who's watching this right now who doesn't know anything about mental health, and okay. especially because you've gone through it and you know that sometimes you also stumble upon the fact that you're in denial. You're in denial of the fact that, you know, you've got it or you're going through something. Let's say, let's say that you're talking to somebody who's at ground zero and I, want, I would want to introduce you to them. How would you? Yeah, everybody, when I go for sessions like this or I'm an international trainer also, they ask, you know, how would you want us to introduce yourself? You know, apart from all the achievements that I've got, I think I've got about four national scale awards, but I would prefer to be introduced as a genuine personality who would never sell out his values, however much the alternative offer is attractive. And then a courageous fighter who would never give up how fairy the life battle is. Number three, a strong personality who could never be kept down by the pressures of life. This is the introduction that I want the world to see me. Fantastic. A little bit about your family and your background, maybe your immediate family that you would like to speak of. My mom and dad both living. I've got three brothers, one elder, two younger, 
and uh, two younger sisters. Right. Let's talk a little bit about your wife and your kids. Yeah. I am blessed to have the most adorable queen in the whole world who simply said yes to me when I didn't have a job. Uh, I've had a very bitter history. You know, all I've had in my parcel was, uh, was a stinky, filthy, bitter history. And this girl was, you know, amazingly beautiful. I, I, I mean, amazingly beautiful. And I just approached her and I told her who I was and things that I've done. She could have married a very rich businessman. And I didn't even have a bank account at that moment. No food cycle, um, not a job. She simply said yes to me. So I'm blessed with the most adorable queen in this world. And through her, I'm blessed to have two children. Uh, one, my elder son, or my son, my Joshua, who's 15 years old, and Princess Esther, who's seven years old. That's that's my treasure. So how that's long my treasure. have you been married? You've been married 18 for... years, or yeah, close to wow. 18 years. Wow. So this happens to you just when, like you said, just when you had nothing. And for her to understand, when you look at it right now, um, and if you sit and have a discussion with her, at this very moment, if she was here. I mean, if you had to ask her maybe three or two questions, what would they be? I don't know. I've, have I've, you had that? I'm pretty sure you've had that conversation. I have still. a conversation with her every day and every night I make sure if I made her felt ill or that I've hurt her feelings, I just kiss her forehead and I just go in and say, babe, you know, you're the best thing happened to my life. You know, I'm weak. You know, if I've hurt your feelings today, please pardon me because I don't deserve you. It's unmerited, undeserved favor to have such an amazing girl like you. So this conversation is there for the last 18 years. I don't think, you know, I may have any other specific questions from her to ask. Fantastic. A little bit of your background. Let, let's say that, uh, you know, your educational background and for you to sit up and make decisions to take such a renowned brand out there in the world you know how how does it feel today and what was your educa educational background yeah i went to like i've told you went to one of the best schools in the country st joseph's college colombo 10. um there was a very good father father trevor martin was he was handling discipline and everything though i've made rash decisions you know that was a structure around me there was a structure uh, which was sending messages to my brain also though i've lost my first journey i've bounced back from zero uh, at a very mature age i would say and i went on to become the best sri lankan student which is the overall sri lankan best results in cim uk and then i tapped or uh, that i've notched uh, the sri lankan prize for analysis and evaluation on cim uk top the batch on Cardiff Metropolitan MBA. I've got a full scholarship from the government of United States on life coaching. I'm a certified life coach uh, who could work on 63 countries and also by the grace of God was offered or rather I would say honored with a doctorate from United Nations University of Global Peace for my astonishing comeback in life. And as of now, I'm passionately learning neuroscience uh, because I think, you know, I believe that I've got more to give to this world. Right. So you speak about struggles in your childhood, right? How about we touch some points there? So if we have parents that are watching this, um, I'm pretty sure they could take it as a lesson to identify these little points. And also if you can bring in lessons that you've learned that you can really say as a life coach even right now um, to talk a little bit about the struggles that you have had in your childhood and then the lessons out of it. Broken families releases or rather produce broken children with bitterness, anger, resentment, hatred. They are unproductive. The absence of a mom's love at home is sure to release bitter anger uh, 
citizens who are unproductive, you know, who could only be changed through love. I'm against divorce. I'm against it. How, how, however that you see me, it, it doesn't matter. I'm against divorce. I had a very bitter history. My mom loved me. And she may have had her own reasons, with all due respect. You know, when I was about three years, and life at home was miserable. I mean, there was no reason for me to come home. You know, that's why I tend to spend a lot of time after school, sat on places, basketball court, ragged ground. I hated coming home because there was nobody to embrace me. I mean, a child needs to have somebody to embrace. There has to be a reason for him to come after school. I mean, somebody to love and say that I love you. And I've missed that. And I've got no resentment for that, you know. That's why I thought, you know, I've got a great passion. And I've got to do my thing to the society by spreading this message. So absence of a mother will create bitter uh, citizens with anger and resentment. I'm pretty sure you're doing exactly the opposite right now. Yeah. Oh, I'm having the most blessed family life, you know, we are amazing, you know, our, our life is like a film, the way we live, you know, completely in bliss, you know, we spend a lot of time together, we help each other, we understand each other, you know, they make mistakes, I make mistakes, but we help each other, love each other, you know, grow together. Mistakes are okay. Yeah, of course, you know, I sometimes I just look at my wife and I said, babe, you know, I simply don't deserve you. You know, there was a time when I was at William Grinding Mills, Dehivala. Please don't take me wrong for this word. There was a prostitute, you know, who was uh, about maybe 50 meters away from me. And I was just thinking to myself, can I just approach her to marry me? That's how I was lost. I've had nobody. I was just simply craving for love. And I just thought, and on the, on the flip side, there was another secondary thought, which was saying, will she reject you if you approach her? I mean, I was at a state where I thought, you know, a, a prostitute is the only option that I've had. And then on the flip side, if I approach her, will she reject me? Right? So I look at my wife and I said, you know, I've got a lot of weaknesses. We all, there is no perfect boss. There is no perfect mom. There is no perfect dad, there's no perfect husband, you know. We all have our uh, things which we need to work out, you know. And if you understand that reality, that there's no perfect boss, your professional career is going to be good. And you understand there's no perfect dad, uh, life at home is going to be really good. You understand me? How didn't you give up? I mean, there's a lot of conversations behind this lovely setup, you know, when you go out in the world, people are trying to give up on life in general, running away from the challenges that they have already. I think if I may have to sit and speak to you, I could go on and on and on talking about the suicidal rate that we have in the country even today. And uh, we see fancy campaigns that come out from brands saying suicide, do not suicide or talk to somebody or, um, you know, mental health is this and that. But maybe I could ask you this question. How did you come away from those challenges? And have you ever thought of, you know, or if I may put it as to, how did you sustain yourself? I wouldn't like to say... Why, like, why like did you say, give up? Why, like, why did you give up? I wouldn't like to say that I was always a giant. You know, when people come on talk shows, uh, or interviews, they always try to have this grandiosity where that you say that you've always been a giant. I wasn't being a giant always. There were times which I thought in which I acted like a dwarf. It was time that life was so miserable for me. It was too, too hard for me to fathom. You know, everybody left me and I've had nothing. I was begging on streets. I drank poison one day and I, and I suffered to death. And I was a funnel fed for one month. You know, because your throat was damaged, so you've got to funnel fed, you keep the funnel, put liquid food. You just can't, you just can't swallow them at once. You, you've got to stop it here, and then you... And I lived on funnel fed food uh, or, or liquid for, for one month. 
and uh, the, and another location when I was at Pamankada, I hanged up myself and by the grace of God, I was saved by the onlookers. And finally, I don't know whether that you, it, it's hard for me to remove the buttons. I've had a, a great cut on my main vein and uh, I cut my main vein out of misery and the hospitals rejected to operate because there was a uh, close relative of mine to take the ownership of the operation. So they've got to, my friends had to take me from Gampaha to Kalubovila. So life can be so tough. There is a capacity of a brand. I mean, in, in the brain, 200 milliliters of a bottle could hold only 200 milliliters. You know, your brain has a development neuroscience, which is forming, growing and changing. And then there's something what you call the cognitive neuroscience, where that your brain creates and controls um, emotions, um, thoughts, um, memory. And then there's what you call the molecular neuroscience, where there's genes, proteins and molecules which supports neurons. So everybody, you have a capacity like a bottle. I've got a capacity. It's based on, just like you put weights, you know, and, and, and lift. Uh, so that your biceps grow based on the weight that you put. So based on the thoughts that you put and that you work on it. I've got, I've written a nice article on Sunday Times called Mind Muscles. Everybody's just thinking about, you know, the, 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 the physical muscles. No, the, the neurons, the, the brain cells grow as per the fertilizer that you use, as per the nourishment that you use. So my capacity was very less so it exploded and i just tried to run away three occasions but was miraculously saved how would you like let's say there's like a teenager right now sitting in front of you and i'm that uh, person and i come to you and i say that i've gone through a lot and i can't take it um, and i'm also battling with addiction how would you stop uh, one simple advice surrender Surrender, get help. I mean, if you can do it, you'll never be addicted. Addiction means that you've lost the ownership of yourself, that you don't have the control, the authority on your life. You've basically pawned yourself to some material. So you don't have control, so better, surrender. Say, I need help, that's it. So we've had a great conversation right up to the first segment and I'm and like I said, I can speak to you the whole day. So maybe we'll catch them again in the next segment, which is going to have a lot more on the present and the resolving answers to the students that will be watching this. Thank you. You're back with us um, for the second seating. And right here, we'll speak about a lot of things that maybe would benefit a student that is looking for a bright future. Uh, maybe at the very beginning, I would like to know, or maybe you could, uh, you know, touch on points where with your career and as uh, where you've been, maybe the companies that you worked with. And as we already know, you're the CEO of Chandana Lepe, but maybe you can um, tell it a little bit about the past. Okay, I was actually heading a, a wonderful brand called Nature Secrets uh, in 2006, uh, which was a very, would say, a moderate brand. And out of creativity and innovation, I've launched a lot of brands, uh, a lot of sub brands uh, for, the, for the main mother brand. And on time, the, everybody said there are no room for uh, baby products in Sri Lanka. Uh, and, and we've launched during my time a wonderful brand called Panda Baby, which is doing really well as of now. And then uh, I've did a, this is an historical campaign for Nature Secrets face wash, which we went on to achieve 50% of market shares. A brand having 50% of market shares is a very rare achievement. Uh, it's, it's a difficult task. And then I was uh, promoted. I was working to one of the best chairmen uh, in the country, uh, Mr. Samantha Kumar Singh. He's, he's my, basically like my university. And then I was promoted to head 
the brand for Sri Lanka, India, Pakistan and Bangladesh. Uh, then from there onwards, I've never applied for jobs. It was all, all, all about headhunting. I was headhunted by a 150-year-old company, Adam G. Lukmanji & Sons, which is the pioneering uh, coconut-based export in Sri Lanka. So, uh, and their brand was Enjoy, which was number two, uh, next to a very famous brand. Uh, and using one specific campaign, I was able to lift the brand to market leadership within three months. And from there onwards, uh, I was headhunted by Chandana Lepa, uh, which is now Sri Lanka's market-leading Ayurvedic cosmetics brand. Sometimes people ask, you know, it's a, it's a strange story with a Sinhalese name also, how this brand fights with gigantic multinationals. And now the brand has already reached uh, close to 15 countries across the world and doing very well, uh, making Sri Lanka proud also. So let's maybe come back to talking about, you know, mental health, um, the economic crisis, and then kids or students getting affected by this. I mean, if I really have to um, ponder upon it a little bit, um, it's a little difficult for a student to go through all of what we've gone through in the past two years, right? Um, and the challenges that a student would take. Um, it also was decreasing their capabilities because they were not in a very physical state of learning. How would you advise um, a student of that decreasing mental health uh, at that point? And hopefully, I think in, in the future, it's, it's changing gradually, but it's not there as yet. There are things that we cannot escape in life. Life is purely a battle. Uh, from the moment that you get up in the morning and till you lay your head on the pillow, it's purely a battle. Life struggles, rejections, separations, uh, demanding life targets, um, hurting feelings, um, never-ending responsibilities. So there are things that youngsters have to understand that this is the reality, you know. Uh, just running away from the track doesn't make you a winner. You know, if you want to win or conquer a, a geography, you've got to be in the battlefield. That's no option for it. You know, you just can't say, you know, it's tough. Am I going to hide myself in the forest? Hiding yourself in the forest is not going to gonna make you a winner. So the first thing the youngsters have to understand is this is reality. The next door uh, neighbor is going through the same thing and the one on the right hand side is going on the same, same scenario. You know, it's fear. COVID, the fear of life, fear of losing jobs, fear of how am I going to just feed my family, um, fear of future, worry, you know, mental health. You have to be very careful about protecting your brain. You know, you have to be very careful. You know, I, I don't listen to, or, or rather I don't watch Sri Lankan television. Please don't take me wrong. You know, you can just take it out of context and say, you know, he talk, he's a patriotic guy and doesn't watch Sri Lankan television. No, it's full of murmuring. It's full of grumbling. It's uh, full of um, uh, discrimination, judgmental, hypocrisy, blaming culture. Youngsters, please defend your brain. This is so important. Unless, because if you put butter into a cake, it will be rich. But if you put margarine into a cake, it will not be rich as how it will be rich with butter. Just use natural oils for a body lotion, it will be rich. But if you use cheaper mineral oil for a body lotion, it will be cheaper. So what you put in, is what you're gonna get out. So you have to be very careful uh, in a very um, turbulent uh, environment like this. You're a youngster, you know, got to safeguard your brain. This is very important. I don't switch on the Sri Lankan television at my house because my children are very small. I mean, if you just open gates, any stray dog would come in. Any stray dog would come in. So I just say, you know, shut the gate. Don't open. So I told my wife, no, no, babe, no, no social media 
on political channels, no political discussions, no, no um, news, nothing. Just feed them with good films, you know, motivating stuff. Let them sit with winners. You understand? I You're mean, a mom. I mean, books are always there, but then there's yes. good stuff that you can really feed into the brain, right? Yes, yes, you just talk to them, you know, show them there are some good films in Netflix, real life stories, you know, motivate them, inspire them, talk about the goodness. You know, the sad part is that you get a rose. You know, a lot of us talk about the thorns in the rose. Whereas, you know, it's beautiful, the flower itself. But if you train these youngsters to look at a bottle as half empty, you know, it, they'll take it as that default thinking mode, you know, default thinking mode. You know, just like, you know, when I was young and I, when I was hurt, the first thing was a smoke. Right? And when my girlfriend left me, the first thing was a, a, some marijuana or some heroin or something. So my brain subconsciously thought, okay, this is the default mode. To escape life or to face problems, the default mode is drugs. So just like that, if you take grumbling, murmuring, right? And uh, judgmental, hypocrisy, blaming, you know, your mental health is surely gonna deteriorate. Students are always opting out right now and maybe they're also getting away with things that they see here and there and also they try to motivate themselves into thinking that books and books like we just said um, is not the only question um, to be answered by books right so that's why i think they're also trying to opt out but if you were to talk to a student um, to make them realize the importance of education how would you tell them? Can I just ask you one question? I'm asking you to go to a battle and I say, you've got to have your sword, the helmet and the shield. And then you tell me, no, I don't want the sword. What do you mean that you don't want a sword? No, no, I'm fine with the helmet and the shield. Whether that you want to be an entrepreneur or a successful uh, professional um, in the career, you need three things, knowledge, skills, and attitude. And you're just saying that you're going to opt out knowledge. It's just like that you are trying to go to the battlefield without the sword. Knowledge, skills, attitude. Leaving knowledge, how would you survive in the battlefield? That's the most foolish thing that you're going to do. I mean, in a race, you could say, you could tell the judge, sir, sir I'm, I'm sorry, sir, I, I'm not going to run this race. And the judge says, why? Sir, I don't have a pair of shoes. Yeah, that's fine. But then there are plenty of other, other people who doesn't have shoes, they run. Unless you run, you'll never be a winner. So please, I urge you, you know, it's the most foolish thing that you could do is to opt out education. It's just like that you're going to the battle without a sword. This question is going to really hit hard, I think, to the viewers, because at this very moment, every person that you see on social media is leaving for green pastures, or so they think. I mean, every other person is migrating. Every other person thinks that you have green pastures outside. What would you say to them? Can I be honest uh, in this question? Yeah. The politicians are, are robbing the country daylight and I'm not a fool to ask my son to be patriotic and stay here. Please hear me out, right? I love this country. I can work in 63 countries, but I have opted to stay here. But my son Joshua comes and say, um, Dad, you know, I just want to go to Australia. And I was like, ah, fine. You know, sure, but then I need to advise, give a very strong advice. You know, I'm fine with children leaving this country. I'm completely fine. You can judge me, you can discriminate me, but then I'm not gonna ask one simple question. You know, you guys, the politicians, are robbing this country daylight and sending your children abroad, and then you're, not, you're asking these innocent parents to keep their children here? You know, don't come with that crap, please, right? 
if they want to go, let them go. But one advice, son, daughter, vest is flashy. It's so beautiful. When I stepped into Melbourne, 1994, I wasn't glued to my dream. A beautiful woman, casinos, drugs, and vest was flashy. And I just, like a stray dog, I wandered in Vash. I was in Melbourne, I was in Amsterdam, I was in New York, I was in Washington, I was in Kew. And because I wasn't focused, I lost my aim. So if you want to go abroad, that's fine. You know, I'm for it. You know, I'll support you, whatever the way which I could. But please make sure that you remain focused to your dream. Remember, Every single penny or every single cent is hard earned by your dad or by your mom. So glue to your dream. So how much of a flashy the West is, then you will be a winner. Absolutely. Um, I mean, so what skills would you try and feed to a youth who is based here? And if it's going to surround his life or his work life after that, um, as a skill, what would you try to feed them? It's very unfortunate to see um, parents investing, trying to invest uh, millions and millions uh, of bucks on sending their children abroad. Uh, for me, the primary skill, uh, don't take me wrong, I've sucked um, people who've got a lot of paper qualifications but who can't swim, right? Uh, they'll tell, you know, raise your hands, 90 degrees, breathe, five seconds, this and that, and I just throw them into the sea. They can't swim. The biggest skill that you need to have a child is the life battling skill. You know, if you have life battling skills, life is not straight out of the book. You know, there'll be rejections, there'll be separations, there'll be ill feelings. You know, just because that you've got an MBA, or just because that you've got a doctorate, it doesn't mean that you'll bounce back. You know, a, a young 17-year-old child of a very famous school, from a, hailing from a very good family, suicide just because his girlfriend left. You know, and these guys have mathematical skills, sorry, knowledge, education, and everything. It doesn't help you to face life. The most important skill, I would say, that's what I say. I've got a, you know, a life coaching academy in Sri Lanka, the first full service life coaching academy. First thing that you not need to give is life battling skills. That's the most important thing. Knowledge is, is you know, you can send anybody to Harvard, Oxford, anywhere. You know, you can just um, uh, give knowledge, but life battling skills, maturity, how to handle inferiority, how to fight with pride, resiliency, worry management, anger, focus development, life with a purpose. This is what you need to teach our children. How do you do that? I mean, how can you, can you do it on your own? Can you do it out of the books or get them included in the daily, you know, conversations as parents? Or do you talk to them? How do you, how do you feed that thought into a child? I mean, you show uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme's film to a youngster a thousand times, right? And you just ask him, come show us a flying kick, you know, he'll be lost. You know, you just can't do it by just sessions, um, uh, books, notes, tilts. You know, he'll watch John claude Van Damme's film for a thousand times, but he'll fail to put up a lovely flying kick. So you've got to get him into the battlefield, you know. Uh, life coaching is an art, you know, I don't have time for this, you know. It's a beautiful art where that you get them on different scenarios, you know, working on their brain, working on their mind capacity, enhancing their mind muscles. This is something we Sri Lankans need to focus a lot in the future. When can somebody have a life coach? At what stage? What age? It depends. You know, there are times that even 15 year old children are suffering in life. You know, it all depends on, it's case by case, but preferred. At the age of uh, 17, that you come into a life coaching academy, get yourself trained, just like, you know, uh, uh, a warrior who's going into the battlefield, you know, equipped with all the skills so that you face life and that you become a victorious personality and that your parents would look at one day 
and they'll be happy. And that you will also have no regrets on your deathbed because you've made your dad happy, that you've made your mom happy, you've done your thing to the society, you've done your thing to the country. And for that, you need to have maturity. You need to have strength to fight this battle of life. Thank you so much, Dr. Philip. I think we're towards the end of the second segment. And the next one that we have is going to be a rapid fire uh, segment, which we will maybe disclose the questions later on. Welcome back. You're in the rapid fire uh, segment, which is going to be really interesting because I am going to be throwing Dr. Philip right into the deep sea. Let's go ahead and pick up your first card. Okay. Okay, this is going to be somewhat easy for you as a life coach. I think this is something that's going to be very important to the viewers there. What motivates you to continue your career? It's the passion and the concern that I have towards lost souls. It drives me every day. Wait, maybe we'll go to the next one. Okay, this is something that you answered as well. Um, maybe we'll hear it again. Uh, name a person whom you love the most in your life. That's my wife. That's my wife. Blindly, that's my wife. Fantastic. Go to the next one. What would you like to do during your leisure time? I love to spend time with my family. You know, that's my pleasure. And that's where I get blessed. That's where I get hyped, you know, I stay with the family. On to the next one. So we've done three. We have four more to go. <sighs> Who is your favorite author? And name three books most you like to read. I just don't have a specific author as such. I'm, I'm, I'm into a lot of, you know, watching videos, you know, case studies and all. But then uh, if I am to, you know, say the three books which I've loved uh, and which I love is number one is the Holy Bible, which I read a lot, you know, on daily basis. And then the next one is The Rich Dad and the Poor Dad of Robert Kiyosaki and the Blue Ocean Strategy of Kim Chan and Renny Mobon. Okay, do you support your wife with the household work? To be honest, not at all. Do you cook? Do you like cooking? I've cooked when I was uh, abroad, mm -hmm. uh, but I don't cook as, you know, I, I just don't cook. Okay. On to the next one. We have, this is the second last. Who is your biggest inspiration? My biggest inspiration is me. Every time that I, uh, I slip, or every time that I'm faced with a massive, severe challenge, I just close my eyes and remember uh, the battles that I've fought, uh, the times that I've thrived hard, you know, not giving up. Uh, for me, the biggest miracle and the biggest inspiration is, is me, is purely me. The last one. What is your favorite game or sport to watch and play? Cricket. Uh, from that also T20, because it's short, you know. So we are right now at the end of our segment and it was lovely having you, Dr. Philip. Uh, your insights were definitely uh, usable and reusable and takeable and I think people can just write it down. You've uh, given a lot of insights um, and there's a lot of stories that they'll take back as a lesson. Um, would you want anything at this very moment uh, to give out uh, to the public who's, or the moms, the dads, the students that are going to be watching this? Any message that you'd like to give? Yeah, I would love to give a, a very strong message to everyone. A lot of us are unfortunately battling wrong battles. Your greatest enemy is you, nobody else. When I was, when I was young, I used to blame my mom 
for just leaving me when I was three years old. And I used to blame all the girlfriends who left me in darkness. I used to blame uh, the society, which I thought is very unfair. But then one day, I've realized all these successful people have their own bitter histories, but they never choose to blame on their history. Rather, they've challenged their history and reinvented the future. Let me just ask you a few, few questions. Who's actually telling you to postpone your examination? Is it your mom or is it you? Who's actually uh, telling you to skip out your workout, eat junk food? Is it your wife or is it you? Who's actually asking you to fight with a tuk-tuk driver who, who yelled at you in filth? Is it your wife or is it you? So your greatest enemy is deep inside you. Unfortunately, a lot of us are battling wrong battles. You think that your enemy is your boss and that you think that your enemy is your neighbor. Some come and tell me, sure, you know, my wife doesn't support me. She's my greatest enemy. That's not the case. Your greatest enemy is you. Just like a coin, you've got two sides of it, a very good friend and a very bad friend, a black dog and a white dog. Whom that you feed the most will have the control over you. So please, youngsters, moms, dads, don't fight wrong battles. Your greatest enemy is you. What is important is self-realization. That's why I thought after many uh, prudent thinking, I thought that I should launch a, a professional scientific life coaching academy for Sri Lanka, where that you get these youngsters or even parents or even CEOs and give them direction, correction and development. Because like I've told you in the beginning, life is purely a battle. Unless that you get yourself equipped, you know, you'd be knocked down by pressures. You know, that's why, you know, I thought that I should launch this and it's gonna be the first of its kind, uh, the first full service life coaching academy or training academy in Sri Lanka called Dr. Philip Neri Training Academy, which has a life coaching arm, a corporate development arm, and a professional training arm. So anybody who's interested, uh, you know, trying to give the best gift to your child, you can just come in here, you know, we'll make sure that we'll wake up or bring out the champion inside your child. Thank you so much, Dr. Philip. I think that's going to be really helpful uh, to a lot of moms. I think I'm going to wait for my eldest to be a little, elder for me to send him to you as well. I mean, it's going to be a great service to the country. Uh, and on that note, we will be meeting again soon with a, another great personality. And uh, I'll be signing off. And this is An Educator Talk Show.